Burt Middleton again, <laughs> the gout killer. And this is part three of my review of the American College of Rheumatology's new gout guidelines. And we left off in part two, um, video number two, at um, the slide five of 16, and it was about allopurinol dosing. And uh, we're gonna move right on into um, um, slide number six, and this is part three. And that is uricosuric therapy. When using a uricosuric as the ULT, urate lowering therapy, monotherapy, the ACRTFP, TFP task force panel, recommends probinacid. First line use of probinacid is contraindicated in patients with a history of urolithiasis, which is basically <laughs> um, kidney stones. Kidney stones can be made about, out of all kinds of different things, including uric acid. So um, just to give you a little bit of background on that, I have another slide here. Urolithiasis, just to, so we're educated about this. Um, urolithiasis from Greek, condition where urinary calculi, right here, kidney stones. This is out of Wikipedia. And then if you look at what is probinacid, is a uricosuric drug that increases uric acid excretion in the urine. And a little bit more about uricosuric medications are substances that increase excretion of uric acid in the urine, thus reducing the concentration of uric acid in the blood plasma. Now, we're gonna go ahead and come back here and just talk about that for a second because what is important to know is that this, um, this type of drug um, causes more excretion, okay? And allopurinol and fabucostat, those are the drugs that actually are xanthine oxidase inhibitors. Basically, they inhibit, they inhibit the production of uric acid. And in doing that, um, it's, it's kind of a, um, an interesting question because it certainly works to lower uric acid in the bloodstream. However, um, if you look this up, 90% of everybody who has gout does not make too much uric acid. Basically, they don't get rid of enough of it fast enough, which would make probinacid a, a better choice, but for what reason? It doesn't work as well as allopurinol, or at least for some people. So that is an interesting point, and a point that I wanna make because myself and countless other numbers, of, countless other people that I've talked to about this is that while I took allopurinol and my uric acid levels down, came down into a normal range, same for a lot of other people, I still had a lot of gout attacks. So, a point I wanted to make. Let's move on to slide number seven of 16. Well, this is number six, now number seven. Okay, when scenarios and urate won't go away, case scenarios. All patients with gout who experience intermittent symptoms or ha have chronic synovitis, synovitis due to gout with TOFI, chronic tophaceous gouty arthritis, CTGA, should be treated initially with single agent XOI, xanthine, xanthine oxidase inhibitors, titrated to its maximum titrated to its maximum appropriate dosage. If the serum uric target is not achieved or if the patient experiences continuing disease activity, the uricosuric agent should be added to the XOI with both agents titrated to their maximum appropriate dosages. Peglato case, Christexa therapy, may be initiated if the serum uric acid target still is not achieved or if disease activity continues in those with above seven attacks per year and no TOFI or those with two attacks per year and TOFI on physical examination or those with CTGA. Okay, TOFI, I told you I had TOFI in my hands, my fingers and my toes, right? Okay, um, in my last video. Four on this, 
four fingers on this hand, two fingers on this hand, one toe of my right foot. So what they're saying here is that now we're getting into tophi. I mean, we're getting into tophaceous gouty arthritis. That means gout has really gone out of control for a long time. Basically, health has been mismanaged and to such a severe extent that now you're getting lumps of tophi all over your body, fingers and toes, knees, elbows, ears. You can get it all over the place. So now we're talking about going into even more extreme drugs because um, now it really is taking an extreme measure to um, get this mismanaged health situation back under control. Okay, this is where, you know, if, if, if you've mismanaged your health this bad, this is where I think um, uh, Western medicine and pharmaceutical drugs are going to have to be used. Okay, but the idea should not to be to stay on them. It should be to get your health back under control and start doing the right things. Breathing, hydration, food, managing stress, avoiding toxic chemicals is the starting point to managing your health so that you can be gout free like me. <laughs> We're going to move on to slide number eight of 16. <clears throat> Establishing Establishing. Where did I get that? Treating an acute gout attack. The ACR TFP recommends that an acute gout attack be treated pharmacologically within 24 hours of the onset of symptoms and that any existing ULT be continued without disruption. In mild to moderate disease below 6 to 10 on the 1 to 10 pain visual analog scale, monotherapy with NSAIDs, systematic corticosteroids, or oral colchicine is recommended. In more severe disease, characterized by intense pain and often a polyarticular presentation, combination therapy is suggested, colchicine and NSAIDs, oral corticosteroids and colchicine, or intra-articular steroids with each of the other options. Determining which pharmacologic agent is best for a patient has been left to the treating physician's discretion. Okay, so now we're starting to get into actual gout attacks and gout attack pain and what to do about the pain itself. Again, as I mentioned earlier, probably in the last video, where they've gone here is to <clears throat> talk about pharmacologically, treating it pharmacologically within 24 hours. When you even think you might have a gout attack, you are living with an overly acidic inner body condition. Starting to move that pH up into a more alkaline range is the mindset that you need to take. If as you start to move up into a, a more alkaline range, then the NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs work infinitely better. Okay, so they go into combining different therapies now, using the non-steroidal drugs with um, steroidal drugs, actually not with steroidal drugs, but colchicine and NSAIDs, then corticosteroids and colchicine or intra-articular intra steroids or with each of the other options. So, you, you know, you move from one type of drug to another to another, you're still not addressing the condition of over-acidity. That is the point that I want to make about all of this. You know, they continue to pile on the drugs, but they really are not doing anything about the over-acidic inner body condition and we're at nine minutes on this video so uh, i'm going to leave it right there this was slide number eight we're going to come back to number nine and um, continue on with uh, the next video which will be part four video number four so burt middleton the gout killer and this is my review of the american college of rheumatology's new gout guidelines thanks <laughs>